Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. John Coleman and I get to speak with the man on the streets in Hollywood, Manny Pacheco. Hey, Manny, <laughs> good to see you. Well, thank you for having me here today. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Listen, uh, not too long ago, we were all talking about King Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, Max Steiner did the music for King Kong. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the, what everybody remembers about King Kong is the top of the Empire Building, Empire State Building in New York, being shot at by airplanes. It's a wonderful uh, scene, uh, very uh, um, iconic, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it brought to mind the idea that, of course, the Empire State Building is a famous landmark. Sure. It's been used in, I don't know, maybe a hundred different movies because it's so famous. Yeah, I can think, um, like an affair to remember, it was a character. Yep. And then uh, as an homage to that character was Sleepless in Seattle. So yep. it just keeps yep. coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so is is the Empire State Building would you say the most famous or most used landmark in movies? Might be the most used. I'm not sure it's the most famous. I mean, there's been lots of landmarks that are used. And of course, the director that loves landmarks in his films, Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock right. Oh, I mean, Hitchcock, <laughs> it, it begins with Saboteur, yeah. uh, the 1940s film with Robert Cummings and, and, and uh, Norman Lloyd, who lived to be 106 and just died a couple of years ago. Right. Friend of Hitchcock wrote, uh, wrote and directed some of uh, Hitchcock's TV shows, uh, but he was um, he loved to use in Saboteur the Statue of Liberty, which was uh, which was uh, obviously a great landmark. And the Statue yep. of Liberty has been used other times, but that's a very remarkable moment. And yep. then he, he he piggybacks that about ten or twelve or fourteen years later in North by Northwest in New York using the UN Building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's another iconic landmark. And then the the, the big finale at Mount Rushmore. I, I mean, know, that's, that's, that's a great that. scene. <laughs> and the, the good scene. story about that is that he asked permission, you know, in South Dakota to use the Mount Rushmore, and they turned him down. So he just built a, route, a Mount Rushmore, uh, a set. He, that's a set that he's using. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, Mount Rushmore, obviously another one of those fabulous landmarks. And I think it might be the most famous landmark used in any movie, in any scene. But, I mean, he's not alone. There's a lot of other landmarks that have well, been used. The Eiffel Tower has been the in. Eiffel. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, dozens of films. I think that my favorite use of the Eiffel Tower is at the very conclusion of the film The Great Race. You know, with Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis. <laughs> yeah. And to start the race, of course, you know, he has Max, which is Peter Falk, yeah. try to, sh you know, shoot the, the great Leslie, played by Tony Curtis's car, to smithereens. And he misses <laughs> and shoots the Eiffel Tower, and it completely comes down. Yeah. <laughs> I just a just a great scene to end the film and and a great landmark the Eiffel Tower it just desecrated. <laughs> What's the famous the famous uh, well there's London Bridge and London Tower but the the in in, in Rome uh, the, uh, the 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 fountain that they throw the coins into. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's course. been in dozens of films. Three coins in a fountain. Right. Oh yeah yeah oh no. And that... La Dolce Vita. Right. Yeah, La Dolce Vita, absolutely. Yeah. But you know, the, the, the Colosseum has been used, obviously. Sure. Uh, in in many in many different films. But you know, for me, you just mentioned the London Tower, a, a, a very obscure recent entry that uh, where they where they where they actually showed the London Bridge, not the Tower. Mm -hmm. The Tower of London has been used in other ways, but I'll explain that in a second. But the London Bridge was used in the movie Stan and Ollie, uh, where mm. where Steve Coogan points out he goes oh we're here we finally made it to london and there it is the eiffel tower <laughs> <laughs> trickle stan laurel kind of humor which which is which is really really good now a little and, a little bit of trivia here manny for you the bridge that is called the london bridge is really named the tower bridge in london oh well, there you go and it's the one with the big towers and the the netting go the enemy the walkway across the top mm. and all that. that's the Technically, it's called the Tower Bridge. Everybody, particularly Americans, call it the London Bridge. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I, 
as far as the Tower of London goes, obviously a lot of historical dramas have, have, have taken yeah. place. Uh, Anne of a Thousand Days, A Lion in Winter. Sure. Yeah, these are, you know, all these historical, biblical things. When You know, if, if it involves Elizabeth I and, and Henry VIII, you, you know you're going to end up at the Tower of London. <laughs> but if you're talking about Buckingham Palace... Obviously, the the more recent entry, Helen Mirren and the Queen. That yes. uh, Buckingham Palace is used there, and and absolutely um, wonderful. The, uh, an opening scene of an early, uh, uh, the last, uh, no, not the last Alfred Hitchcock. I want to not not Alfred. I'm sorry, Sher Sherlock Holmes. One of the Sherlock Holmes, I believe it was called Terror by Night. Hmm. They show a picture of Big Ben. To open, to yeah, open I was going to say Parliament. Parliament has often been used, but more is just yeah. sort of passing. Uh, uh, landscape. Uh, one of the uh, the key uh, 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 landscape uh, uh, landmarks would be in Notre Dame. Uh, uh -huh. and we see that all over the place. Uh, sure. Uh, sure, and it's yeah. most famous, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it takes place throughout the entire the entire church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I, I, and it even it's even portrayed in animation you know disney actually portrayed it as well mm -hmm. yeah. so if we're back in france of course the seine the seine is used remarkably well in an american in paris you know very famous where, where the famous uh, our love is here to stay number yeah. is mm -hmm. right in front of the seine and so and, and of course a summertime with uh with 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 catherine hepburn where she falls famously into it and ends up with pink eye the rest of her life because of <laughs> yeah, she, really? had, she had eye problems after that the rest of her life because she fell into the same. Uh, and, and of course, even a little play about, about back home. Let's talk about back home. Okay. If you watch the climax of Blazing Saddles, where does it take place? In front of Grauman's Chinese Theater. Yeah. Hedley Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> So, I mean, Grauman's is, is an iconic landmark. I mean, that really spells out Hollywood. And here's um, here's one that didn't take place in a movie but still earns merit for conversation is the Hollywood sign and the mm -hmm. famous side of Peg Entwistle in the 1920s where she jumped off the Hollywood land sign bridge. Uh, uh, sign, not sign. the bridge, but the sign. The Hollywood land sign. She jumps off to her death. And it's a famous suicide that takes place at an amazing landmark that was originally designed. That Hollywood land sign was designed for yeah. development of property in Real the area. So yeah. people could actually live in the area so that yeah. they could create a community of Hollywood. And in fact, so, it was Hollywood land. And then it was foreshortened for whatever. I'm, I'm sure there's a documentary on that just to Hollywood. But you also have uh, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. You have the Brooklyn Bridge, certainly. Yep. Uh, and... The Brooklyn Bridge used remarkably well. Uh, the, the Brooklyn Bridge used remarkably well by Woody Allen mm -hmm. in many of his films, but probably the best use of it was in his film Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And the Golden Gate Bridge, again, let's go back to where we began, Alfred yep. Hitchcock and Vertigo. Hitchcock. Right. Yep. <laughs> and then later used by Mel Brooks, you know, in High Anxiety, just because he wanted to pay homage. Because he's to Mel Hitchcock. Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> And one more, Disneyland, of course, an iconic landmark. And if you watch the movie Saving Mr. Banks, where Tom Hanks actually plays Disney, and they're on the carousel in Fantasyland, yeah, kind of cool. And in front, of, and they're actually in front of Disneyland uh, with uh, with uh, with P. J. Travers, of course, the writer of uh, of um, Mary Poppins, and played by Emma Thompson. So yeah, right. Disneyland, great movie. Used, and just so many wonderful landmarks that we can talk about all day long that have been used so well in so many great films and it's I, I think it's important to pay tribute to the geography and the and the landmarks uh, th that exist I mean I mean if you, one more I want to throw out how about the Sphinx I think was used in the mummy with Brendan Fraser so I mean <laughs> mm. so I mean there, there are just a lot of the pyramids were used in the original mummy with with Boris Karloff just so many landmarks I mean we could just go on and on yeah yeah well, they they make for great drama because they're so well known, and they have such they bring with them, uh, they bring with the image they bring a, a certain feelings to to mind. So, they're, sure. of course, they're always going to be in demand for 
certain kinds of movies. And you yeah. just keep thinking, thinking, you think, wow, the, the Vegas Strip in Ocean's Eleven. You get yes. this overall look of the Vegas Strip, and it's Ocean's Eleven. It's Frank Sinatra. It's Dean Martin. It's Sammy yeah. Davis Jr. And it's like, wow, that is so iconic. I don't know if they have an early <laughs> copyright on it, and maybe you can disp come up with a half a dozen examples, but even though it's an iconic image of New York City, I don't remember ever seeing too many of the Chrysler building in no. in a movie. And it, it may be, I seem to remember somehow it was copyrighted. Uh, but the whole landscape of, of, of that of that skyline and everything yeah. at the very beginning of West Side Story. Mm. It's absolutely remarkable. It's just, it's fabulous. Yeah. The new uh, West, West Side Story. Oh, the old, the old the original, the original West oh, Side Story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a movie uh, called The Hot Rock with uh, with Robert Redford and George Siegel. They fly oh, through the skyline. Wonderful line. little film. Yeah, hmm. and they fly through the skyline of, of, of New York. So yeah. there's, there's that. And if you want to talk about Chicago Sears Tower, how about that one wonderful scene in Ferris Bueller's Day Off where they're looking down <laughs> from the Sears <laughs> yeah. Tower? That's mm -hmm. kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, landmarks are important in films, and I, I think they give a, a film some sort of a direction of where people are. Yeah, yeah. Well, they do make the film seem more grounded in reality too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's because a great. Yeah. Other than Alfred Hitchcock, uh, you can't rebuild these things. Other than Alfred Hitchcock, you can't rebuild. I got to think about. Well, on on the. Uh, in the North Dakota, what's the uh, uh, South Dakota? He, South Dakota. Uh, Mount South Rushmore. Dakota. Thank you. He rebuilt that. You told us. Well, yeah. I don't know. I think if Steven Spielberg needed to build something or Martin Scorsese, they might just build yeah. it. So I'm not sure that well, it's okay. Just Hitchcock. <laughs> or or Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls has been used a lot. Oh, oh sure. my yeah. gosh, you're, you're not kidding on, on Niagara Falls right now. I just saw that movie, A Man Named Otto, which a wonderful look at Niagara Falls. Also in the film of 1953, I believe, with uh, Joseph Cotton and Marilyn Monroe called Niagara. And mm -hmm. of course, they use Niagara Falls as the backdrop. Yeah, backdrops, uh, landmark backdrops make for exciting additions to great scripts and great acting. I'll, yeah. I'll go with that. Wow, this is a tasty little, you know, journey, a little side trip enough. from what we normally do. Not people, but buildings. I, I know. I agree. I think it was fun. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go someplace now. I'm ready. Thank you, Manny. <laughs> You're welcome. See you soon. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.